What are the various factors I see shown on my power meter in calibrate mode? And should I ever adjust them and how? There are a number of different factors in calibration mode, each of which has a different role. Some of them are actually user adjustable. For example, in cases where you need to calibrate against your own in-house master reference. I must stress that adjusting any internal calibration factor voids the calibration that was done in the factory. This should only be done in a case of a clear need. It should only be done with the greatest of care and it should only be performed by properly qualified personnel. If you're not sure if you really need to be adjusting these factors, you probably should not be doing it. Having said that, uh, I will clarify now the meaning of these different factors. The shape of a given absorber type's spectral curve is known and is constant, since it's a function of the material of which the absorber is made. The relative response of a given absorber at a particular wavelength compared to the response at a specified reference wavelength is one kind of factor. Normally 1064 nanometers is the reference wavelength that we use for this purpose. The user does not see this factor by the way, but it's in there. Let's call that factor one. The height up and down of the overall spectral response curve is a different factor. This represents the overall actual analog sensitivity of the detector. This is what is normally adjusted during the calibration process since it varies from unit to unit due to all sorts of production tolerances. That's the reason, by the way, that we need to calibrate every single unit that's produced. Let's call this factor two. It's one fixed number for each given individual sensor. As you probably know, we use a speed-up algorithm to speed up the response time of the sensor and give a reading after some one to three seconds instead of the longer physical response time of the sensor, which in some cases might be as high as 10 seconds, for example. This speed-up is set during calibration and is stored as a mathematical function inside the sensor's EEPROM and is represented by yet another factor. As I just mentioned, we enable the users to adjust the calibration of the sensor with all due caution in case they need to calibrate against their own defined master reference. You can change the calibration for one individual wavelength or laser setting or for all wavelengths together. Needless to say, any changes in such calibration factors performed with all due caution should be recorded for future reference since adjusting any internal calibration factor could be very significant. Now let's see how this actually works. Here's the basic idea. For any given wavelength, the overall factor for the sensor, factor 2 as we called it, remember it's invisible to the user, times the specific factor one for that wavelength, its relative response compared to the reference wavelength 1064 nanometers, gives the final overall factor for that wavelength, which will be displayed as simply laser factor. Let's see it on an actual instrument. We go to calibrate in the main menu and set it to adjust laser, in other words, adjust the calibration factor for just this laser wavelength as opposed to all wavelengths together. Laser factor 0 0.7953 over here means the final factor, normally factory set, for the selected wavelength. In this case, near infrared means 1064 nanometers. That includes factors 1 and 2 that we just talked about. In other words, this represents both the overall sensitivity of the detector and the relative sensitivity at a particular wavelength, both taken into account. Factor 0 0.7953 over here is a user adjustable field. If you go to it and press enter, a modify window will open and allow you to change it. Saving that change will change laser factor accordingly. Note that as you modify the factor, you see what the original number was and you see the effect on the measurement reading over here. 
Note that for near infrared in this case, these two factors are actually the same because as I mentioned, 1064 nanometers is in fact the reference wavelength that we use. So this factor represents only the up-down adjustment of the curve. If you were to change the laser setting to CO2, you would see two different numbers. There's one other type of factor, as we said earlier, and that's related to the response time speed up function. This too can be user adjusted. If you go here to menu, response, and then following the on-screen instructions to recalibrate the response time speed up. Modifying this factor incorrectly could cause the response time to slow down or to speed up but with an overshoot or undershoot. In general, again, any modifications to factory set calibration factors should only be done with the greatest of care, only if there's a real need and only by qualified personnel.